the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift up a praise unto God this morning. For he is truly worthy to be praised. For there is none like him, none above him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many are excited to be in the presence of God today? You're excited to lift your hands and worship him on today. Hallelujah. Welcome to our live feed and welcome to our service. We ask you just to join in with us as we lift up the mighty name of Jesus. For this month, our focus is love. Our focus is love, and we're going to focus on the love of God and how to love others. And so you will hear us sing a lot about love this month. So I ask you on this song today, it's a call and response. You may not know it, but you simply just repeat. I'm going to say, Lord, I love you, and you say, Lord, I love you. I say, Lord, I love you. You say it again. And then we say more than anything, okay? So don't feel like you can't join in. Just call and respond with us, okay? Come on, put your hands together like this. Hallelujah.
many of you truly believe that and live by that? I love you, Jesus.
TV. More than sex, more than drinks, more than my phone, more than anything, yeah, I want to love you more than anything. Teach us how to receive your love. us to receive your love. Help us to receive your love. Help us to receive your love. Yeah. Father, I thank you, God, as we go into the next part of service, Lord hearts and our minds are ready to receive this word on today, God. God, I thank you for that deliverance and healing is going to go forth in the house on today, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for that thing that we've carried year after year, God, will be lifted on today, God, through your word, penetrating through our hearts, oh God. God, I thank you right now that we are clear in our minds, clear in our ear gates to hear to receive in our hearts, Father. Touch our leader, God, as he come up here to do something that may seem heavy, but to preach freedom, to preach freedom, God, to your children. Father, I thank you that you have covered him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, God. Help him to walk in your authority, God to go into the trenches and bring your people out, God. God, I thank you that you're going to move by your spirit in the house, Lord. We thank you, and we count it as done, God. And it is in your mighty name that we have touched and agreed. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together and thank God for who he is on today. Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you for your presence, not just in the building, but more importantly, your presence in our hearts today. We pray that you have your way. You move by your spirit. You set free and deliver in only a way that you can. So, Father, as your word says, who the Son has set free is free indeed. So, Lord, let liberty be in the house today. Hallelujah. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and we say amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. I think I got to go back. Give me, give me one second, y'all. Our sound girl ain't here today. I got to go back and turn my own mic up because <laughs> I don't think nobody know how to do it. So just give me a second. Hallelujah. I just need a little more on the mic. Catch that one right there. That one right there. Amen. We thank God for his presence today as we move into our new series, Crazy Love. As you can see, we are excited about this topic uh, because love is not talked about enough. Um, and I know it's Black History Month. We're still going to celebrate black history. 
but we've got to do what the Spirit is leading this house to do, amen. And so we're going to talk about crazy love, loving like God would have us to love in a, such a time as this, in a world that we live in. Crazy love in a crazy world. If you have your Bibles, open them to 1 John. And if you are able, please stand for the reading of God's Word. 1 John, the fourth chapter. We're going to look at some other scriptures t- today. Today is going to be a more of a topical message. So to my note takers, definitely. Amen. First John, the fourth chapter, starting at the seventh verse, if you got to say amen. If you don't say hold on. Okay, that's all right. First John, the fourth chapter. We'd like to thank Sister Melba and her daughter, Don, who created our, our little love display. I think she here. Is she here? Where Melba at? There she go over there. Wave your hand again, Melba. If you ever need somebody for your, your birthdays, your parties, and she, she, she does a, an amazing job. Can you do this one as well? She does an amazing job. So, Melba, thank you. Thank you so much. First John, the fourth chapter, starting at the seventh verse, and I'm reading from the King James Version, and it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man hath seen God any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. I want to preach from a subject this morning. Only his heart can heal yours. You may be seated. In the presence of the Lord, only his heart can heal yours. As my pastor would say in Youngstown, my brothers and my sisters, as we look into the scriptures, one thing that I believe is overlooked is the importance of love. I think it's like the Holy Spirit, something we overlook or neglect and kind of do what we want with it. At the end of the day, love is important as Christians. It's not something that we should take lightly. It's not something that's just emotional, but it is a way of life. It is a way of living that has been modeled to us by Christ. Love is important. The Bible has a lot to say about love. God is love, right? That means that love is a part of God's nature. It's not what he does more so. It's who he is. And if God is love, that means that there isn't no other source of love than from him. True love only comes through him. But that means everything that he did, everything that he initiated, everything that he has done for us has been filtered through love. A love that is hard to understand because of the fact that we uh, base our love off of how people treat us down here. And that's, that's crazy because God's love is not like this world. 
His love is totally different. His love is extravagant. His love is selfless. His love uh, comes without preference. His love is unconditional. The word in the Bible for his love is agape. Agape, A-G-A-P-E, and it refers to a benevolent and charitable love that seeks the best for the loved one. And it does it with nothing uh, in return. There's no strings attached. And we see that with Boaz and Ruth. We see that with David and Jonathan. We, we see that with Hosea and Goma. Love, love is important. It's not something that we can just do away with, but we have to be careful what we do with love in our lives. If, if I can put it plainly, we just can't do whatever we want to do with our hearts. But Jesus said here in Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, verse 38, which is the first and greatest commandment, verse 39, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself the most important the greatest commandment is to love God and the second is to love others what are we doing with our hearts there has to be something crazy about our love because being that God's love is not of this world if we are of him as first John 4 says then our love should not be of this world and our love should be odd. Our love should be bizarre. See, there's a lot of people that can preach, but can you love? There's a lot of people that can run a business, but can you love? If hmm, There's people that can handle positions, but can you handle people? With the love of Christ, hold up, when they offend you, when they neglect you when they come on somebody hurt you you find out how much Jesus is in you or somebody else when it's time to love and there's a decision there's a choice to love or not to love in every situation Matthew the fifth chapter the 43rd through the 45th verse says ye have heard that it has been said thou shalt love thy neighbor and Hate thy enemy, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 45 says that ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. That would make sense, right? Because while he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Two. Love is important, wouldn't you say? Love is so important that in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter is the chapter of love. Matter of fact, before I even go to 1 Corinthians, let's go back to our, our sermon last week, Colossians, the third chapter, the 14th verse, and it, I was, it was telling us what to take off and what to put on, right? And I was asking y'all, the Holy Spirit told me to ask y'all, where is the difference, right? Uh, and it was telling us to take off uh, uh, sex, take off fornications, take, take off lasciviousness, take off these, these desires, these lustful desires, take off anger, take off malice, take off filthy communication. Then he says, put on Christ. And then he says, put on Christ. And when you put on Christ, you put on kindness, you, you put on humility, you put on patience, you put on forgiveness. It said, but the greatest of all these is to put on love. One thing I noticed that I didn't say last week about the, 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 the putting on and the, the putting off and the putting on. In, in the old man, everything is about yourself. In the new man, everything is about somebody else. Think about it. Kindness, patience, forgiveness. In 1 Corinthians, the chapter of love, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, there's a verse in the last the last verse of that chapter says, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, he 
even went on to say that love is greater than gifts. Talks about the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of giving, the gifts of sacrifice, gifts of this, gifts of healing. But, 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 but the greatest of all gifts is love because why? There's going to come a day when those gifts are no longer needed, but love abides forever. There's going to be a day when you're not going to need a prophecy, but love will abide forever. Because the greatest of all these are out of faith, out of hope. It's, why? Why? Because love, its origin is in God. And love is the reason why you have faith and why you have hope. <laughs> There's no faithless love. There's no, I mean, loveless faith or no loveless hope. That's why love is, the, look at somebody say love is important. Love is not something that we can just gloss over, but we have to be crazy enough to love the way God loves it. And I, I will say real love is truly tested when those that are closest to you have hurt you. Real love is tested. It's, it's okay. It's different when the enemy does it. And their arrows come, but it's different when it's a dagger. Come on, somebody talk to me in here. And the Bible says that we are to love others the way God loves us. Meaning, the way I have experienced God's love is the way I ought to treat others. Am I making sense in here? This is the crazy part. I now have to exude what God has bestowed upon me. We, we are to, as we see, we are to love our enemies. We are to love, uh, husbands are to love their wives as Christ loves the church. We, we are to be selfless and we are to reflect God's love in a dying world. It's one of the most powerful things you can do is love somebody. Especially when they're at their lowest. I wish somebody would talk to me. Especially when they don't deserve it. I wish somebody would talk to me. Especially when they, they have no merit for this love, huh? I'll never, I'll never forget when that young man hugged that cop in the courtroom. I know you ain't going to like me. He, 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 said, he said, I had to do what God would have me to do. And he hugged the cop that killed his brother. And the world went crazy. Why in the world would you hug? No, that, no, but God's love is crazy like that. It is not defined by the world's ways of hating. Get back at you. I'm trying. No, no, he showed. And baby, when you can show love without talking, you don't really love. And that hug shook up the world, shook up the internet. Had people all over the world arguing it. Whether he should have given that woman a hug. If Christ would have stood there, he would have gave her a hug. Crazy love. Huh? Crazy love. It's a love that doesn't make sense. It's a love that doesn't put self first. But it puts somebody else Somebody else's well-being in front of yours. That's love. Where does love come from? Right? We know it comes from God, but within us, it comes from our hearts, right? That's the crazy part. I'm not talking about the physical heart, but the psychological heart. And the psychological heart in the body is the core of your being. The Bible talks about the heart being the place where, where the heart thinks it's where you have conscience it's it's where you have your personality it's the center of who you are your heart psychologically is the center of who you are that's why proverbs 4 and 26, 23 says keep thy heart with all diligence right for out of it are the issues of life why because your heart is Originally wicked. That's why when kids come out the womb, you ain't got to teach them how to be bad. But you got to teach them how to be good. I wish somebody would help me in here. You ain't got to teach them to say no. You ain't got to teach them to talk back. You ain't got to teach them to do whatever they want to do. It's, it's in their heart. 
it is at the core of who they are. And with that being said, pray for Jaden. Because uh, that little African-American needs a heart transplant psychologically. Jesus. And then y'all pray for me. Because he thinks I'm a single parent. And I'm not. I have a whole wife that he does not want to acknowledge. So y'all pray for me. <laughs> now, if the heart is the core of who you are, when the heart is contaminated, who you are is contaminated. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. If the heart is where your emotions are experienced, if the heart is where your personality is, if the heart is where you process things, if your heart is contaminated, and it'll contaminate everything attached to it, your reasonings, your decisions, your standards, your whys, your reasonings. That's why Jesus came to give us a new heart and a new spirit because he knows that the real deliverance starts on the inside and works his way out. The heart is important. It's needed because it is the faculty by which God's love flows through you to that undeserving or deserving person. But what happens when the person who has to love has been wounded? Let's talk. Huh? What happens when that heart becomes a heart of stone? got some people that it's hard to love because they've been through some difficult experiences. Y'all going to talk to me in here. They done been through some difficult experiences that have blocked the love of God or can I say has stifled the love of God. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So, so, so we're going to talk about crazy love. Uh, but today I got to try to help you. I believe God can supernaturally heal some of you this morning. But I also believe that you might have to still do some work after this service. However, God wants to do it is all right with me. But, but some of y'all need to be healed. Y'all y'all can't love like God wants you to love because you've been holding on to something. You, 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 you got some wounds that, that, that have the final say instead of God's spirit. And some of you have been convicted to love more. But because of your traumatic experience, because of your woundedness, but you don't realize that you have bondage yourself. You have bondaged yourself in this hurt and you're missing your freedom. I didn't mean to go here already, but you're missing who you are. You're missing your identity. Give God. I, I, No, 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 it's not the enemy, it's my heart. It's been messed up. The core of who I am has been tainted, Royce. Some things have happened to me that I can't let go. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh-huh. Let's talk about it. Come on, let's talk about it. Some of us have a block, and that block is called, that's blocking God's love, is called rejection. Mm -hmm. Some of us have been abandoned in our early, early days in our lives. We've become sensitive to any form of rejection anywhere else. It cannot even be something serious, but because of the deep-rooted feeling of rejection, we, we find ourselves tiptoeing and avoiding experiences where we have to be accepted. Which becomes an armor that gets in the way of God's love. Come on, somebody. Uh, Christ has designed us for receiving and giving. Uh, and if, if you have dealing with rejection or abandonment, I want you to know something today. Just because that person rejected you doesn't mean everyone else rejected you. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Just because that person doesn't love you doesn't mean everyone else loves you. You can't bottle your total being into one person. Come on, somebody talk to me. 
John the 15th chapter the 9th verse says as the father has loved me so have I loved you you've got to get to the place where the love of Jesus is enough if he don't love you if she don't love you if mom don't love you dad don't love you you got to get to the place where your faith says Jesus is enough love for me if they don't accept me for who I am Jesus has accepted me with my flaws he has accepted me with my issues it's a, look at somebody say it's enough for me his love is enough for me let go of looking for acceptance from people who will never accept you so that you can love because that rejection will turn into self-hate. Huh? That rejection will turn into self-hate and you will begin to base your value off of how people accept you or not. No. No, you are somebody in Christ. You don't think so? Why did he, why did he die on the cross for you? You don't think so? Why did he shed his blood for you? Here. There's some people dealing with rejection. Let that armor down. Love freely, whether you accept it or not. How about this? Take your power back and love the people who rejected you. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm going to love them. <laughs> That's crazy. Wish them well. Pray for them that God will bless them. That, that's, cra <laughs> that's crazy, ain't it? But that's the love of Christ. Some of us have experienced a block called trauma. Trauma can be a very wide array of things, abuse, neglect, assault, racism, life-threatening events, major betrayals that can lead to symptoms of PTSD. And people who have experienced trauma, trauma, traumatic experiences are always worried if they're safe. The reason why they can't love like the way God wants them because they're wondering if that traumatic experience is going to happen again. They, 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 Sister Courtney, they're trying to see if am I safe or not. And because they are still in survival mode, there is no capacity to love. That's not even on their mind because they're worried about if this is going to happen to me again. Am I going to be assaulted again? Am I going to be uh, 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 abused again? Am I going to be raped again? Am I, am I going to be robbed again? But I, I, I want you to know something, that there's safety in Christ. Huh? That God will use that if you, listen, listen, if you put your trust in God, that he can change your perspective of what happened to you. Instead of saying, why me? Say, how can I grow from this? How can I be forged to be better? Because what the enemy means for bad, I know God can turn it around for your good good that you don't have to be consumed about what happened in the past but you can be healed today and say yet will I trust him psychologically God I give you my heart psychologically God I release that fear so that I can love again uh, Isaiah 4 and 10 says fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand that's not a traumatic experience that you have went through that God can't deliver you from he is able to set you free today he can deliver you today so you don't have to be consumed by that trauma. You're trying to feel safe and God is right there. He's right there. He's never left you. Now I can't, I can't answer why he allowed it to happen, but I know he's the one that can sustain you. Hmm. For the Lord is nigh unto them. Huh? He is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saving such that be of a contrite. Spirit, baby, his address is your broken heart. You think you're alone and he already there. <laughs> He's occupying your heart. Now you occupy him with your time. I mean, occupy him with your time. Every time that traumatic experience comes back, speak faith. Every time it comes back, speak faith. Be bold.
bold. Be courageous as he told Joshua, for I am with you always. Every step you take, he's right there with you. You don't have to walk in that fear. You don't have to walk in that anxiety. Do I got a witness in here today? God can do, he can do a new thing. Love the person who caused it. Free yourself and love the person who caused it. And say, I'm going to be like God and I'm going to love you anyway by the power of the Holy Spirit. I choose love. I choose agape. You ain't got to give me nothing back. Baby, I'm doing this for the glory of God. It's who I am. Hey. Hey. You didn't deserve what happened to you, but you're going to live through it. You probably wasn't the cause of it, but you're going to get something better going to come out of it. Hallelujah. These blocks, these blocks, these blocks. These blocks in the core. Come on, let's get the core healed today in the name of Jesus. So we can love, so that we can do a love that's not of this world. Let's get the core healed today. Uh, I ain't no, no counselor, but I'm doing my best. Hmm. Some, some of y'all, you can't love because you're too busy dealing with shame. You're too busy wallowing in guilt. Saying, I ain't good enough. And it stifles you loving others because you don't feel you deserve to love anybody. Huh? See, when you feel the bad about yourself, it dictates how you move and how you respond. When you, when you belittle yourself, huh? I don't know, maybe there's a sin you dabbled in. Maybe there was something you were born with. Some people are ashamed because of a birthmark or a birth defect. Uh, some, some people are ashamed because someone has shamed you. But, but listen, I want you to know that there is no condemnation, okay? There is no condemnation. God never asked for you to be perfect. Come on, somebody. He's if you wallow it in shame, he has already dealt. Christ bore your shame on the cross. He bore your shame on the cross, meaning he never asked for you to be perfect. He said, I will fulfill the requirement of perfection. I just need your faith. Huh? Come on, come here, Colossians 2, 13. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. The problem with those who overdo the guilt and the shame is you go from conviction to condemnation. Listen to me. Conviction is healthy. Condemnation is unhealthy. Conviction is Holy Spirit. Condemnation is Satan. Conviction says, oh, this is wrong. Time to turn around. Condemnation says, oh, time to die. There is no turnaround. The devil is a liar. I, I, I remember when I was in college and got a young lady pregnant and she, she, she uh, had an abortion. And I was sitting there in the Taco Bell line talking to my best friend Mario on the phone. And I said, man, I'm I, I supposed to be a minister, man. I, man, I was supposed to be to, to show people how to live for God, man. And, and, and I just chick that she done, we had a baby. She done killed the baby, man. It's, I just need to kill myself. And Mario said some choice words to me at my lowest he said, boy, you still anointed. I don't care what nobody say, you still got purpose. Could you imagine if I'd allowed that shame to abort, to su allow suicide? Where would it, <laughs> I wouldn't be standing here today. Don't let shame have the final say. There's life after your failure. There's life after your indiscretion. Do you imagine? been four kids I wouldn't have met. It would have been a beautiful wife I never would have married. It would have been a church I never would have pastored. There would have been people I never would have met in here. But I'm so glad that God showed me. I just want
want somebody else to see. <laughs> Listen, I ain't got it all together. You don't either, but there's life after your mess ups. Don't let that shame have the final Who am I talking to in here? Let's just be honest. Don't let that shame have the final say. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. I'm sorry, y'all. God healed me at our heal us, heal us at our core. Heal us in the place that nobody can see, but you can. Remember, Israel couldn't see the king's heart, but God can see the heart. He can see the heart. He can see the inside, the core. That's what needs to be healed in order to be to love. That's what needs to be healed in order to be free. You can't let these trauma, these traumas, these rejections, these things that have contaminated your heart to hinder and stifle the love of God. There's another block I want to talk about. And that is of emotional abuse. Hmm. That's psychological mistreatment. It's not physical abuse, but it's not less damaging. There's somebody who feels invisible because someone doesn't acknowledge the emotional abuse that has happened to them. Thank you, Sister Norland. I'm trying. When somebody has emotional abuse, they may feel not cared for. They may feel worthless because what somebody has constantly done to them or said to them, right? They lack self-confidence and find it an honor being a doormat because that's the only way they feel they can be accepted. Uh, huh? But, 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 but I want you to know <laughs> that you don't have to be silent about that abuse. Because silent perpetuates the abuse. Sometimes you got to say, when you start, listen, when you start loving yourself, folks, you got a problem. <laughs> when you open your mouth and say, no more, nah, you tripping, nah, I was tripping before. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, you're not going to mutilate, walk over. Even if you can't see it like I see it, I got to speak my truth so that I can be healed. You're not going to keep treating me any type of way. First of all, if, if, if God is love and I am of God, the first thing I got to love is God. And the second thing I got to love is myself. Come on, somebody in here. I, uh, you, 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 you've got to have a healthy sense of self-esteem where you're able to function on your own and speak up for yourself amen but when God sees his children hurting he does not just sit back Psalms 147 and 3 says he heals the broken hearted Psalms 147 and 3 and binds up their wounds God sees your hurt uh huh he sees your hurt but one thing I want to ask has he heard your cry I don't care how much sex you have, it ain't going to heal you. I don't care how much money you make, it ain't going to heal you. I, I, I don't care how many new friends you get, it ain't going to heal you. Uh, uh, you got to go to the manufacturer that made you. That, that stuff, I don't care how much you drink, it ain't going to heal you. You, you got to go to the one who wonderfully and fearfully made you and allow, <laughs> allow him to do a new thing. I, 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 I know he sees your hurt, but has he heard your cry? He tells Moses, I hear the cry of my people, and I'm going to do something about it. Moses, I need you to go. It wasn't their affliction that moved God. It was their cry. And sometimes even in the emotional state, our healing is based on our response. I can go get something to drink. I can go get some alcohol or I can go get some R&R &R or I can go to Jesus. 
he, he, he heals the brokenhearted. Huh? And he binds up their wounds. And that's important because your emotions overlap the core of who you are. And emotions, as Elder Arndt would say, emotions do not have intellect. Emotions are like toddlers running rapid, and sometimes you have to override what you feel and stand on what you know. Who am I talking to? That's, that's what I'm trying to get Jaden to understand, that you don't have to feel all the time. Sometimes, just use your words, son. You know daddy gonna help you. Why you gotta whine and nag? Just know that I'm here. Just know that I can deliver. You want muffins? I can reach what you can't touch. You want something out the refrigerator? I own something. And if I own it, you can have it. All God is saying is that he can do what you can't do for yourself. He can reach what you can't touch. You can't touch your emotions, but he can touch your emotions. You can't touch your heart. But he can touch your heart. It may not feel good. Stand on what you know. Uh, we we got to ask God, cry out to God and say, Lord, heal, transform, deliver my heart. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God, to override these emotions that are dictating my days. Don't it suck when you're having a good day and you see a post shifts your whole inner being? Don't you, don't you hate when you're having a great day and you get a phone call from somebody and say, why did they? I was praying, I was fasting, and then. You ain't got nobody like that. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be like, decline, not today, Satan. Ba, 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 ba. Not today, Satan. <laughs> decline. Yes, I saw your call. Yes, I ignored it. I, did, I, I was trying to work on me. I didn't have it. I didn't have crazy love. I had normal love. I was about to cut you. I had normal love. That's what you was about to get. Human love. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> hmm? You get a, somebody steps into your space and shifts, and you got to make a decision. Is this person going to, is this thing going to define and set the tone for the rest of my day? Or I'm going to choose. Come on, come on. I'm going to choose to live above this. I'm going to choose to walk in love. I'm going to choose. There's one more block before we get back to the text. And then I can close and, and then whatever you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart to do, to lay on the altar or whatever have you. Uh, but, but there's one that is obvious that we got to talk about before we get out of here. And that's the block of unforgiveness. We must, if we're going to love, we must forgive those who have hurt us. Uh, we must not confuse reconciliation uh, with acceptance. Just because we're reconciling doesn't mean that I accept what you did to me. Uh, doesn't, doesn't mean that you are weak. Actually, forgiveness is the strongest thing you can do. <laughs> It's the strongest response because what it's saying is I'm not going to let the trauma of what this person did to me control me, especially when they're not even present. I ever, I will never, I, I refuse to live in a place where the person is absent and their name changes my demeanor. No, no. No, 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 no. The, 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 the easiest but yet hardest thing to do is to choose to forgive. Hold up. To let go of the offense. But can I be real? So, to keep letting go of the offense. 
See, the initial forgiveness is like, oh, yeah, okay, I got you, forgive. But then sometimes on a certain day, it can come back up in a certain way, and we feel some kind of way. Am I talking real, Sister Vier? And so I got to choose. Okay, let that offense go. It's a continual bout between my flesh and the spirit. <laughs> and the more I choose the spirit, the stronger I'll become. If I told y'all to go out here and run a mile, some of y'all will run a quarter mile and die. Y'all will pass out in the snow. We have to get ambulance, the C4, EKG, CAT scan. They still here. Hallelujah. But Coach Dave, if I tell you to do it every day, one day somebody going to tell me, Pastor, keep up. <laughs> Pastor, where you at? <laughs> Why? Because you were persistent in something that was difficult. And the more you discipline yourself, if you keep forgiving, the stronger you'll become. If you keep letting it go, the stronger God's love will rise up in you. Huh? You have to let the offense go. Come on, somebody. Huh? Simply put, forgiveness means I cancel a debt. You don't owe me. It also means I don't want any ill will or anything bad to happen to you. I forgive you. Now, how can we forgive others? Because when we look at how wretched we are. Come on, somebody, come on. How dirty we are. How fickle we are. And Jesus still wakes your dirty tail up another day. And you don't deserve to open your eyes. When you get a new day of grace and mercy, that's enough reason to tell somebody else, I forgive you. Because neither one of us should be here today. <laughs> Just because I don't commit the sins you commit don't make me better than you. I remember, I remember getting to a point where I couldn't stand my biological mother. I remember, I remember getting to a point where I said, I ain't want nothing to do with her. She ain't never got to come back in my life. Lola May is my mother. If y'all don't know, I was adopted when I was eight. Mom was out there. I got put in the foster home, long story short. And I remember getting to a point where if she was dead, I'd be all right. And then one day, a young lady called me, said, hey, I'm your biological sister. I said, oh, okay. She said, yeah, I'm two years older than you. I was taken from, I was taken from, your, from our mother before you was even born. Oh, is that so? We talked. And then as I began to dig into my mother's life, I met my grandmother, and when I met my grandmother, I realized I had to forgive my mother, because how can I forgive somebody that's never seen me? And the moment I chose to forgive was the moment it was easier for me to love her. But I also love her with understanding. I want y'all to know that. My mother is back in prison. An old case caught up with her. She did change her life. And we are closer. She knows her grandchildren. She knows her daughter-in-law. Most importantly, she knows God. I'm grateful. What I realized, Royce, is that everything I was holding against her wasn't worth it. Forgiveness was worth it. I want her to live. 
I want her to have life. I want her to see what she's been missing in God. I hold nothing against her. I cancel the debt. Now I pray. We pray on the phone. We read scriptures. Give me one second. We had just, we just had a situation where she was trying to get released early. I said, Mom, I don't know. I talked to the lawyer. She wasn't, she wasn't nice about it. I don't think you're going to get released early. She said, oh, no, they said just this, that. Come back, got a final decision. She's not going to get released early. She still got 16 more months. She'll be okay with me telling, telling y'all this because she always wants y'all to pray for her. She loves Mount Hebron. You always say, tell them. Tell them what I'm doing. She's in school. She, she goes to church. And so we got on the phone and got the bad news that there was no release. She said, you know what? God brought me this far. I don't think he's going to leave me now. Ain't that what you say, son? I said, Ma, that's what I say. She said, well, I'm just going to ride it out and trust God. I said, all right, then. I'm going to put something on your books. And in 16 months, what's behind you will never be in front of you again. I speak it in the name of Jesus that not a drug or a criminal activity will overtake her life. robbing you of the more that you could be experiencing. Who you need to forgive today? I'm, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that it's easy. I know it's hard, but baby, freedom is in the forgiveness. It's you taking your power and choosing to do it God's way. That means I'm not going to let this offense bully me. Tell me what I'm going to do and how I'm going to live. Nope. I'm going to walk in purpose. I forgive. I'm sorry. Some of y'all might need to ask for forgiveness. Huh? Huh? Let it go. Why? So that you can love again so that you can be healed from the inside out so that we can show this world listen we show that we are Christ's disciples by how we have loved one another not how loud we shout not how good we preach he didn't say that he didn't say how good we pray he said how we love somebody say love is important as I get ready to close why well, I say his heart to heal yours it's because as Jesus came to the last moments of his life he knew what was ahead but yet still went forward that's right Shamika thank you God he knew he would die but that didn't deter him from loving us see there's a lot of people that going to jump off at a certain part of the journey. But the love of Christ loves to the end. He didn't just love us in death. He loved us through death. Come on, somebody. He knew what was ahead and still died. Didn't want to do it in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is not what he wanted. But love pushed him anyhow. Said, Father, not my will, huh? But let yours be done, man. But that's what he said. That was love. See, love is giving of yourself, even when it's uncomfortable. That's what love is. Love is giving of yourself when, when, when it takes cost. When it's a sacrifice, as I always say to married couples, love is going and getting the Nyquil when it's three degrees and you didn't already got your slippers on. What? You got your night clothes on. Shoes is off. What? And you need what? What time they close? They close in 20 minutes. Now you got to rush. You was chilling, watching the game. Talking to my brothers. Ate dinner. Babe, 
baby, I need, I need you to run and go get me some drama me. Huh? I need you. Right now? Yeah, I ain't feel it. All right. Let me go get my shoes with the rubber soles. Jesus didn't want to do it, but he did, Royce. He loved us knew that we was wretched while we were yet sinners Christ died for us right I'm closing the soldiers come and this is what I want y'all to hear and it's something we have to celebrate you should and something you should who cash up at me that's crazy <laughs> that was cash up thank you Lord I t- thank you Demi Getting blessed while I'm preaching. Look at that. See what happens when you do what God wants you to do. You get blessed. <laughs> they come and get Jesus. They come and get Jesus. They arrest him. Look, look, look. Jesus done went through some of the stuff we went through. What happened? The disciples left. They abandoned him at his worst moment. Peter denied him three times. You, you felt rejection? He has too. Can you imagine here the savior of the world looking at the people he going to save running from him? You talking about abandonment and trauma? Then they take him to the stump. Y'all seen the passion of the Christ? They take him to the stump and nearly kill him before he go to the cross. I never forget when the soldier said, flip him over. Remember those whips thronging at his chest. The sensitive areas, places you don't even think to get tattoos. Ripping at his flesh, right? Then they get him on the cross. Bink. 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 Other wrist. Bink. 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 Put one foot on top of the other. Bink. Lift him up, raises him up. The beautiful thing about this story is that the nails never touched his heart. The beautiful thing about this story is that the whips never touched his heart. They got his flesh, but he was able to love because it never got his heart. See, we done went through life. And the abandonment got our heart. The rejection got our heart. The, 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 the trauma got our heart. Oh, but Jesus' heart can heal yours. Because he will still say, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. He was able to love us, not only in death, but through death. The nails got his flesh. It didn't get his heart. (laughs) And he willingly hung on the cross. I want you to know that there's no other love greater than the love of Jesus Christ. And if your heart is broken, he's the one you take your heart to. Huh? If there's a healing that needs to take place, he's the one you cry out to. And I'm here to tell you that he can help you overcome that shame, that abandonment, that trauma, that unforgiveness, so that you can be free to have crazy love. That you can love your spouse. Come on, somebody in here. You can love your children. Because sometimes them the hardest ones. You can love your siblings. Listen, and they ain't got to love you back. That's freedom. You ain't got to say thank you. You ain't got to appreciate. Baby, I'm doing this for the glory of God. I'm doing this because he's all over me. I'm doing this because I am his possession. I'm going to love you anyhow. You, You Republican, Democratic, I love you. 
You white or black, I love you. You criminal ex felon, I love you. Drug addict, I love you. Whatever. Only his heart can heal yours. As we stand on, on our feet all over this place, there may be somebody here today that needs to lift up a cry. There may be someone here today who needs to cry out. As even though it hurts, it's still our responsibility to love. Huh? Now, his love doesn't dismiss what you've been through. It overpowers what you've been through. Guess what? Because when he heals you, you still got to be vulnerable again. Somebody talk to me in here. But when he's the source, when he's the source, you can be vulnerable again. You say, I love because he first loved me. I forgive because he forgave me. Huh? He's the source. He is the example. I remember as I get ready to close in Bible study, we had a good Bible study on Wednesday. Really good, good, good Bible study on Wednesday. Go back and watch it. And as the Apostle Paul was in prison, he's on death row. He is about to die. And he prays. And as he is writing to the, le the letter to the Colossians, he says, pray that God will open my mouth and give me the words to speak the mysteries of God. He's in prison. He didn't ask for an easy sentence. He didn't ask for a release. He said, God, <laughs> show me how to use whatever time I got left for your glory. I think that fits this message today. You've been hurt, but whatever time you got left, Say, God, you can use whatever I got left. Whatever's left in my heart, come on, somebody. Whatever left in my heart, you can have it. Use it for your glory. Whatever I got left belongs to you. However you want to use it, however you deem necessary, I am yours. If there's one here today, Christ is waiting for you. He wants to take whatever you got left. The doors of the church has been open. Maybe you've been hurt and it's hard to love. I encourage you to surrender your heart to him. Surrender the core of your being. Surrender who you are. That healing, supernatural healing can take place today. Uh, maybe there's some forgiveness. Maybe there's a trauma. Maybe there's shame or even something I didn't mention. He is a restorer. He is a deliverer today. He can heal you today. Or the process, the journey can start today. How about that? Hallelujah. It can start today in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If there's another today, I understand. I understand some of you may be a little uh, 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 sensitive, don't, don't want to show that, that there's maybe some things on the inside, but it's more important about what God knows about your heart. Don't let nobody stop you from coming to this altar today. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody stop you from coming to your healing today. Your healing today. Your deliverance today. Your restoration today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get that forgiveness, out, unforgiveness out of you. Get that unforgiveness like a sickness. Sometimes that forgiveness will make you physically sick. Huh? Healing today. Healing today. So that you can love the way God loves. Healing today. Thank you, Lord. Freedom today in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's another, I don't, I'm not trying to coerce anybody. I'm just encouraging. Huh? He is able. He is able to forge purpose out of this pain. He is able to extract divine enablement out of this this experience give it to him today take your heart back to the manufacturer today come on who are you or maybe you don't know christ maybe you don't know who jesus is today is a good day to give your heart to him and say lord here i am i believe that that, that jesus died for my sins and that god raised jesus from the dead today is a good day healing today deliverance today if there's another, 
if there's another one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Who else? Just give you a few more minutes, a few more minutes. Come on, yes, sir. Come on, who else? I'll wait for you. Just walk with me. Who else? Come on, come on. And if you're not coming today, if your heart is where it needs to be, if your heart is where it needs to be, intercede and pray for somebody else. Intercede and pray for someone that's up here this morning. A few more minutes. Come on, Dr. Yvonne. You see him? Come on. Come on. Have your way, God, in this place. Men, it's okay to show sensitiveness. I know we talked about the heart, but your heart needs to be healed too. Can you bring it down just a little bit? Yeah, men, your heart needs to be healed too. Uh-huh. It's okay. We, I know you're strong, but sometimes a strong man got to go and cry out to the creator. Sometimes a strong man got to cry out to God. That, that's where your strength lies. I'm just saying. I ain't trying to coerce, but I, I don't want y'all to think that heart is about women. It's about human beings. <laughs> uh -huh. Please. If there's any brothers in here. that sometimes uh, we, we, you know people have a heart attack and when they have a heart attack physically they cannot take another one because their heart is too weak and so there has to be some precautions some stems or there has to be something that, that helps to prevent because if the heart attack happens again the consequences can be severe some people can, cannot afford another psychological heart attack It'll be too much pain. I hope I'm talking. If you are in that place, don't sit there and be cute. Cry out to God. If you're in that place where it says, hey, if I have one more of these, God, I might lose it. Cry out to him today. Huh? Cry out today. Except God don't use stents. He heals. <laughs> he don't need to put that stuff on. He heals. Hallelujah. session to reach outside the building as well. There are some names that you know that aren't here.
that you can be calling God. And we serve a God that's all powerful and all knowing. He's omnipresent as well. He can be here. He can be at the house of the name that you call. Call out. Call out that name. Let him hear your cry, as Pastor Judah said. Coincidence that as we talk about the sacrifice here, we take a moment to remember. I don't know if you got a chance to get a communion cup in your hand. As we take a moment to remember the greatest display of love. No greater love than this, than that a man would lay down his life for his friend. need one? Anyone else need one? He took a piece of bread in his hand. He said, take ye, eat, for this is my body which was broken for your sins. He took a cup and said, take ye, drink, this is my blood that is shed for the remission of sins. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. <laughs> Lorenzo's, Lorenzo's 
daughter last first Sunday. She part participated in communion with us. She said, Jesus' blood tastes nasty. <laughs> We're going to do better, baby. We're going to do better. We're going to do better. Thank God that it's not symbolic, that it's just symbolic. Amen. At this time, we're going to get ready to, to give. You can give so via Cash App. That's dollar sign MT Hebron 216. Or you can click on the push pay link. That should be in our comments on our live feed. Or you can give in person. And so if there's one here today, we don't have no certain formality of forgiving. You just come and bring your seed, bring your offering. Amen. You can come now at this time and then we'll pray over it. She got a whole lot of money in her piggy bank. She probably got more in her piggy bank than I got in my, my bank account. Has everyone had a chance to give? Oh, we got somebody back there. Come on. I love seeing the babies come down. Teach them young. Teach them young. While we're still giving, next Sunday at 10 a.m., our new members class will start right back there with Dr. Yvonne, if you'll raise your hand. So if you are a new member and especially you desire to get active in ministry, we do ask that you go through our new members class. So glad to just have people joining in such a time as this, uh, that God is still blessing our ministry. Um, and so we just not too long ago celebrated our graduates. Uh, from our first new members class in the pandemic. Uh, so if you if you need to meet with her afterwards, please do so. Uh, once again, raise your, raise your hand, Dr. Yvonne. That's who you see after church. Uh, and if, so please, yeah, please see her afterwards. Listen, I hope that word blessed you on today. Did it bless you? You learned something about love today? It's, it's important, amen? Love is important. Just give God whatever you got left, and I tell you, it'll blow your mind. Just give him whatever's left in your heart. It'll blow your mind. Now, there's nothing wrong with therapy. I believe God can do the supernatural. But there's nothing wrong with going to see a therapist and working through what you need to work through so that you can be free. Sometimes you need the natural and the spiritual. Amen. So please, please keep that in mind. I want to bless the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for every seed that has been sown into this ministry. Lord, as you said in your word, if we give liberally, if we give cheerfully, then we'll be blessed bountifully and you'll continue to give seed to the sower. Lord, I thank you for every financial seed. I thank you for every financial offering, Lord, that has sustained our ministry in these, in these times, oh God, that we're still able to pay our bills, our salaries. We're still able to function and handle our secular responsibilities here at for this building, oh God, and we pray for increase, that we can continue to do more, that we can continue to give more, and it's in Jesus' mighty name I have prayed, amen. Hallelujah. And so, I want to do some more of this type of teaching on Wednesday nights. Uh, I thought this was, me, me and First Lady felt that this was very important to start with this because you can't really love the way Christ loves if you're not healed. Like, you have to acknowledge your hurt, right? I'm not saying you have to be perfect, or there's, but for some of us, there's something that needs to be acknowledged. There's something that needs to be removed before we start to emulate Christ, or else we'll be confused <laughs> when we're trying to do it. It's, like, it's not working. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> you still hate. <laughs> but so so we, we felt it was important to start this, but we're going to continue to talk about Christ and how Christ loves. That's important. 
the Christ of the Bible, Jesus of the Bible. Um, so that that so that love that's that's what's needed uh, in the world today, especially in these days and times, where people are more segregated, separated, more hostile. We need love. I know it sounds cheesy, but it's the truth. Is you just need love? As, as, have you ever just been loved by a stranger before, and it just throw you? Man, that was nice. And you don't know what you don't even know how to accept it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like I I I I even little things. I love the fact that the, the person in the in the street moved back so I can get out. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. That's love. They didn't care about themselves. They're trying to make sure I can get out. They don't know me. But we have to be. We should be the agents of love if nobody else is. It should be us. We shouldn't be waiting for the world to give it. We should be the change we want to see. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to go ahead and pray out. And she got her coat on, rubbing her kids' heads. So I think she's ready to go already. Listen, listen, she still ain't nobody else standing but me, her, and David. She, she, she is ready to go, honey. She got chicken in the oven. You all right? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all give it up to one of our songs. Give it up to Shantae Carlton. Come on, Shantae. Bring your mic up, sis. Ain't that a, hey, that coat is cute. I just, okay. I see you. <laughs> Let's get ready to stand and be dismissed at this time. Pastor, <laughs> Pastor, before you end out, we do have two announcements. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, all children, if there are any parents that want their children to be um, involved in our Black History Month program, we're doing it at the end of this month. Please come see myself or Sister Trinita after uh, service. We're going to, and please give us your number so we can contact you all with the information of when we're going to start rehearsing and everything. And then the last Sunday of this month, also, we are trying to support our members who have businesses. So we are going to um, line up some tables. If you have a business that you um, sell things and you feel like, hey, I can bring it in, please come see me as well because I want you to sign up so you can get a table. Um, and we want to sew back into your life. Amen? Amen. It's easy to go out and go to Target. It's easy to go to Walmart. It's easy to go to all these other stores. But if you have it, we want to support you um, as your family. Um, yeah, as your family. So those are the two things. Please come see myself or Sister Trinita for the children. Trinita, wave for, your hand, please. Thank yes, you. Yes, that's Sister Trinita. And then for if you have a business, please come see myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, First Lady. Sorry, I'm on the sound. Oh. <laughs> also, uh, teens, ages 9 to 18. Okay. Uh, parents of those teens, myself and my lovely wife, Brianna, uh, to get your contact information after service. We are looking to doing something for the teens uh, in the coming in the future. So if you yeah. want to see us, if you have children or teens that you're here, come see us, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> teens. Entrepreneurs, children's choir, was that right? Oh, children's choir, okay, all right, we here, we alive. Come on, somebody say, we alive, we alive. Listen, it's been a while since we didn't had this stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We good, is there another voice that's going to call me? Is there another voice? Okay. Um, Father God, we come to you first thanking you for another time, another chance for us to be in your presence and to experience you like never before. Yes, God. Yes, God. Um, we thank you for the lives that were touched this morning um, through worship and through the um, sermon. Father, we pray that it not just um, be something that is left here when we leave, but that we take it with us um, throughout the week, throughout our lives, and that we learn to love like you. Um, that we receive your love, that we receive your healing. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Um, we just thank you for everything that you are doing in Mount Hebron and in our lives, God. Um, I pray that we just continue to um, carry this word um, and study your word, grow in um, our relationship with you. Father, I pray that you give us traveling grace and mercy as we get to our homes, whatever, we, uh, whatever plans we have today. Um, and I pray that you just be with us throughout our week. Um, and that we just continue to be with you throughout yes, the God. These things I pray and ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, go love on somebody this week. Go love on somebody.
Hallelujah. I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there was a voice. There was a voice. There was a voice. It came I after. Had. It came after. But I, I thought about the sermon um, today. And I uh, said, so, my mic was what? Lace got this uh, fairy tale. Okay, um, okay, okay. Um, um, many of you know Courtney Hauser. She is a therapist. Her and I do trauma groups together. Um, and we are starting our trauma groups in March. And with this, just all that Pastor taught on today, it really came to me to just let you guys know, if you want to sign up for these classes, please come see me to get information. We are trying to do the work, the behind the scenes work that can't be done on a Sunday morning. Um, and this is for women. Sorry, men. Um, or it can, it's for women. Sorry. Yeah, guys, we love y'all. Yeah, we got something coming soon. But if you would like to sign up for that trauma group, I can get you information. Please come see myself or her, since she's here, um, after service as well. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. I'm done for real this time. I'm done. We don't believe you.